disclaimer, this is not a functional behavior assessment. It's just a commentary. Therefore, the suggestion should be interpreted with caution. In this clip, you can see how one of the children goes to the back of the room in the quiet area to calm down using a ball in the morning. In this clip, we'll see how Brad handles an outburst by one of the children. Notice that the child immediately goes over to the calm area, and Brad takes the time to talk to one of the other boys who is involved in the conflict. In the back of the room, in the calm down area, they have a calm down kit with a variety of materials, one of which is this small stuffed animal that this child is using to calm down with. So it's either reading a book, not right out the blocks, or we're writing about what it is it Notice how Brad talks to the children privately and in a positive way. He praises this child for making the good choice to come back to the calm down corner and calm himself down. He uses positive touch and a positive voice. And he knows it's not worth talking to him until he has calmed down. Lecturing or yelling at the child will only incite the, uh, the behavior and make it worse. So as you can see, Brad uses specific strategies, such as staying calm himself, and teaching the children social skills, problem solving, conflict resolution skills, so that they can begin to solve these problems on their own. All right, so notice here that Brad is handling an outburst where the antecedent to the outburst is most likely the fact that he was given some sort of direction or demand because you can see Brad close to him talking to him right before he had the verbal outburst. Notice that the student now escapes the direction or demand placed on him by Brad, the teacher, and now he's uh, sitting in the cool down area with a toy. So tell me what's wrong with that picture. And Brad wraps up his intervention by, I don't know what he's doing. He's like petting the kid on his head and on his arm, some kind of uh, tactile and uh, vocal attention. So as you can see, Brad uses specific strategies such as staying calm himself and teaching the children social skills, problem solving, conflict resolution skills, so that they can begin to solve these problems on their own. Okay, so now the narrator claims that Brad taught them conflict resolution, being calm, but it's most likely that he created a behavior problem, reinforced it, and now it's going to get worse the next time. So let's recap. Anne was talking to him talking to the, the student, giving him some sort of direction. He has a verbal outburst, which is the behavior. The consequence, it looks like there's a, a dual function, possibly. So he goes over to the cool down area, which is really escaping the presence of the teacher. And then he gets, gets access to a toy, which is access to tangible. So we may have a dual function here, which is escape and tangible access. So, the best function-based intervention for this is probably to teach the student a functional equivalent. So instead of having the verbal outburst, he would simply be taught to ask for a break. That way he can, on his own accord, go over to the alleged calm area and access the toy. So what I would suggest, though, the best intervention would be for him to be able to ask for breaks instead of the outburst, to go over there, not access the toy until he's actually completed the task that he was asked or that he was issued by Brad. So in summary, the best behavior intervention hack is for Brad to 
not allow him to have an outburst. Before the outburst, he's prompted to ask if he needs a break. And then he goes over to cool down area. Then he comes back. And then he works or follows the direction and then earns access to the break and the stuffed animal. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again, behavior scientists, and keep moving the science forward.